Adam, and this is honest, one of the things that I have struggled with um, is the institutional church. And now in my 60s, I have become cynical. And every once in a while, I get that glimpse of faith. But in an, especially America, the American church right now, in American Christianity, it's like people have hijacked Jesus. And, and instead of being transformed into a kingdom of God worldview, they've kind of brought Jesus into their own, own kind of convoluted belief system. What is going on? What do you think is going on? Well, I think, uh, I think we certainly make Jesus into our image. We have a picture of what he's like. He's safe. He agrees with my politics. He agrees with my lifestyle. He doesn't like the lifestyle of those other people, you know, especially the politics and the views of other people, but he's an awful lot like me. And, and so we've tamed Jesus, you know, and I remember C.S. Lewis talking about, you know, uh, in, in the Chronicles of Narnia, he is not a tame lion. And this image of Jesus as a lion who is his own, you know, he, he's not going to be tamed. He's not going to be turned into what we want. And I think, you know, interestingly in America today, for many people, um, I think for a lot of people, their civic religion is more important than their Christian religion. You know, uh, when push comes to shove, they're going to follow their political ideology before they'll follow Jesus. And, uh, and I think, you know, to call him Lord, this is one of the great, you know, uh, the great messages in the book of Revelation as well as in other places in the New Testament, it's Jesus who's Lord. He is the emperor. He is the commander. He is the, he is the master. And our task is to figure out what is he asking us to do in this kingdom that we're a part of. And, and that's, that's a far different thing than the Jesus who makes me feel good about myself all the time. Adam, one of the experiences I had, I shared just why we don't have the American flag in the sanctuary. I'm not judging anyone else, but right. it's, it's, I'm trying to teach our people that um, allegiance to Jesus supersedes yeah. uh, a, a, allegiance to the United States of America. And I, I was sharing this, and so I was doing a book signing, yeah. and uh, a man came up to the table, and I finally found out he was an FBI agent, mm-hmm. but he said to me, no, that's wrong because we're Americans first and Christians second. Right, and listen to that. And, and so what this has created, again, is this, this cult of the nation state. Yep. Jesus came to remove the dividing walls that stand between us. Yeah. So it creates this um, one-up kind of, kind of position that our nation's better than yours. Mm-hmm. Uh, for God so loved the world that God gave uh, God's only begotten Son. So we forget that uh, we are all children of one, one father or will... Uh, denigrate will say, you know, Christians are better than Jews or, or better than Muslims or God loves Christians more than atheists. Mm-hmm. And it creates division. And to follow Jesus means that I'm part of a movement that tears down the barriers that stand right. before us then, then builds up. What do you think? Well, I had a friend years ago, and this was years ago because we were like seminary. And for his cross-cultural experience, he went to India uh, for a seminary class. And uh, they went, they were in Calcutta, so just by happenstance, uh, they went to see if they could see Mother Teresa. So they went to the house of the um, Sisters of Charity, right? Sisters of Charity? Yeah. Is that what it's? Uh, and is that what that? I think it's the Little Sisters of Charity, right? Yeah, the Sisters of Charity. They went to the house, they knocked on the door, and just, I mean, who would know? Who would even think she's in the country? And a sister answered, took them into kind of a parlor. Uh, waiting room, kind of a sparse room, and here comes Mother Teresa. Mm-hmm. She, and she was probably pretty old at the time. And so before they left, uh, my friend said, do you have any advice for a young seminarian? And she said just this, preach Jesus, the true Jesus, the real Jesus, and not the Jesus of people's imagination. Yeah. How do you think we've done that? How do you think in the church we've created Jesus of our imagination? Right. Well, you know, I think, uh, I think the flannel board Jesus that we learn about growing up, the Jesus who lines up with our preconceived ideas, you know, he's either a Republican or a Democrat. He, European. Uh, uh, Europe, white European. Yeah. You know, our images of him is the way we portray him. Um, what he demands of us, you know, is, is, you know, is, is nothing that's going to be too hard or too threatening to me. Um, and, and consequently, I think we often miss him. This is why the Gospels are so important. And when you read, but even them, you can read the Gospels and you interpret them through the lens of what you want them to say. Your own life experience. Right, your own yeah. life experience, which is good, uh, but sometimes you miss out on the radical nature of who Jesus is. One of the things you said a second ago I want to come back to, you mentioned, um, you know, you were talking about the flag in the church. And one of the images I have of the church is that the church is the, 
um, embassy for the kingdom of God in any given community. And so it, it, isn't, a, it isn't a national church. It's not, it's not a U.S. church. It's not a, if you're in Germany, it's not a German church or a Russian church. It, it's an outpost of the kingdom of God. It's an embassy. It's a foreign embassy. And, and we don't ask our foreign embassies to fly U.S. flags in front of the foreign embassy. You know, we, we are, uh, they, they have their own, they're their own entity within. And so we're in the world, but we're not of it. We are, uh, we are Christians first, and then we're citizens of the state second. And so long as those two things don't conflict with each other, we want to be the best citizens we can possibly be. We're going to, we're going to be, you know, honorable and faithful and giving and sacrificial and all of that. We're going to pray for the state and our leaders. It's when there's a conflict between the state and our faith in Christ, that we have to make hard decisions. And it's sometimes where we have to stand up and speak out. And that can be really hard. And it can be really hard when it's times of war and you're raising questions about should we or shouldn't we go to war? Does this qualify as a just war or not a just war? Is Jesus asking us to go and drop bombs on somebody else? Or, uh, but it also has to do with economic policy. You know, it has to do with, uh, it has to do with how we're concerned for the poor and what we do with the, uh, for the least of these as a nation. And we, you know, ideally, I'm, I encourage our members, going into politics is one of the highest callings you can face. If you, if you want to be in public service, you know, you can do that as a, as a minister of Christ. And of course, there's separation of church and state, but you bring your values to the table when you're, when you're making decisions about how you vote on things.